Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to reload 45 Colt. Let's get to it. So first off, anytime I start working with brass, I like to knock off the particulates. They're kind of dirty. I don't like running dirty shells through my die set. So I use a turbo tumbler, turbo media, treated media, which is not necessary. You don't need to use a treated media, but I do to make it shinier. And I use a five gallon pail with a sifter. So first off, I start by pouring in about halfway with the treated media. Then I go ahead and pour in my shell. And I let this run for about two hours. After about two hours, I go ahead and separate the media from the shells. Now we're ready to start reloading. So today we're going to be using the RCBS 3 die carbide set uh, 45 Colt. Um, it suggests using a number 20 shell holder. This kit comes with three different types of dies. Your resizing, deep priming die, your expander die, and your bullet seeder and crimping die. It also comes with two different types of seeder plugs. One's for flat nose, and one for round nose. So the first die setup is your resizing deep priming die. You want to make sure that the deep priming pin is sticking 3 16 of an inch below the bottom of the die. You want to make sure that your shell holder is already in place in the ram. Run it all the way up. Screw the die down until you feel it touch the shell holder. You'll tighten it down. Now you're now you're set to resize and deprime. Then you'll take your shell, place it into the shell holder. Since these are carbide dies, you don't need um, any type of lubrication. Straight wall cases typically don't need lubrication, so we'll just go ahead and put that in. Run a few shells through. Now you have a fully resized and deep prime shell. For case prep, straight wall cases typically don't stretch, so I'm not too concerned about the length of the case. I typically go through after a few times shooting them and just make sure that they haven't lengthened on me but they typically don't stretch that much like bottleneck cases. So for case prep, um, all I really do is focus on the primer pocket. Clean the primer pocket. Chamfer. And deburr. The next step is to use the expander die. You're going to go ahead and place it into the press. You're going to run the ram all the way up to the top. Screw the die down until it touches the shell holder. And you just you want the die just above the shell holder, so I just back it off just a little bit. Go ahead and tighten the locking ring. Now your bullet expander plug, I screw that all the way up to the top. What we're doing is we're creating a bell in the case so the projectile will fit into the case. And for this, we don't need much of a, a bell. With the expander plug all the way up, I'm going to lower the ram, place the empty shell 
into the shell holder, run it up to the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this expander plug down about half turn increments until I get the bell that's appropriate for the projectile. Now we have a perfect bell so the projectile sits into the case nice and easy so it doesn't when you go to seat the bullet it doesn't shear off the sides of the bullet while seating the bullet into the case now that that's done we know this is appropriate make sure to lock it into place going to go ahead and prime our shells. Um, these require large pistol primers. I already have them in the primer holder. Uh, I've already gone through a few of these today, so I'm going to just use up what I have in here. I like to raise this so I can actually see that they're not upside down. Uh, so I raise it up, place the shell in. One safety uh, piece of advice is don't put your hand over the case mouth. Uh, in case there is detonation. Go ahead and squeeze down. <clears throat> and now you have your primed shells. For those of you that cast your own bullets and do powder coating, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a comment below and let me know how you powder coat your projectiles. I have a couple of thousand of these. I'd like to make them look uh, a little bit more presentable than this. So if you have any tips or tricks, please drop a comment below. Today we're going to be using the Lyman 50th edition reloading handbook. I've recently been gifted 250 grain Lyman cast bullets for my father-in-law. So we're going to go ahead and reload these today. All right, so on page 453, 250 grain cast bullet should have a cartridge overall length of 1.57. We're going to use tight group today. The starting grains is 5.6. The max is 6.2. When you're working up new loads, you want to start at the starting and go up to the max. Somewhere in between, you'll find that sweet spot for yourself. All right, so I've already loaded my tight group into my powder thrower. I have my scale zeroed out. So now we just wanna make sure we're within that 5.6 to 6.2 grains. And we're 5.859, that should be totally acceptable. So now we can go ahead and start charging our cases. Now these cases have been prepped. They're all ready to go. They're primed. Now one thing I like to do after charging the cases is just make sure that the powder is in there. The worst thing you want to do, especially with a revolver, is have a squib load. Now we're ready to place the projectile. So for the bullet seeder and crimping die, I like to start off by just taking out the bullet seeder. For this project, we're using flat nose projectiles, so I want to make sure that I use the flat nose bullet seeder. What you'll want to do is take your case that's been primed and charge, place it into the shell holder, run it all the way up to the top. Take your die and you'll screw it down until you feel it touch the case mouth. Once you feel that, 
Once you feel the die touch the case mouth, you want to turn it back one full turn and lock your locking ring. Now remember, the purpose of the, this die is for crimp only. The cedar plug does all the work pushing the bullet into the case. So the only function that we're doing right now is pushing the bullet into the case using the bullet cedar plug. We're not applying any crimp at this point in time. So I'm going to lower the ram. I'm going to place the projectile into the case. Place it into the shell holder and run it up to the top of the stroke. Now, in order to get it to the appropriate length, we're just going to incrementally turn the bullet cedar plug down until we push that projectile into the case to the measurement of 1.57 inches. All right, so now we're at the appropriate length, 1.57 inches. If you're not going to apply crimp, you can stop here. You can tighten the bullet cedar plug into place. And you're good to go. If you'd like to crimp, We'll go into that next. Now for crimping, the first step is to, what I do is I pull the bullet cedar plug all the way back. You can take it out if you'd like, that's just fine. And you'll want to loosen your locking ring. Now remember when I said that this die, the only function it really has is to crimp. So that's what we're going to set it. Place your fully sized ammunition back into the shell holder. You're going to run it up to the top of the stroke. Now you're going to dial your die down until you meet resistance. Lower the ram. You're going to dial this down incrementally, not a lot. We want to find that sweet spot for the crimp. Okay, now I'm going to dial it down just a little bit more. All right. Now, now I have the crimp that I like. It's fully sized. It's ready to go. Now, if I want to run all of my ammunition through it, I want to lock this down. Place the bullet cedar plug. Stick your cartridge back into the shell holder, run it up to the top, and now you're going to run the bullet cedar plug all the way down until you meet resistance. Once you meet resistance, you have your locking ring already set. Your bullet cedar plug is pushed down to the projectile. You're going to lock this down. Now, if I have this set appropriately, I should be able to seat and crimp my bullet all in one stroke. One point five seven length, perfect crimp, ready to go. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Rumble at K2Defense. See you next time.